as a softball, developing your jab is one of the most important things you can do to become a much better boxer. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through a few drills that you can do on the heavy bag to improve your jab, improve your jab's conditioning, improve the placement of your jab, and finally, how to speed up your jab. So let's get into it. For a softball, the jab starts with the right hand. And whether you're naturally left-handed or whether you're right-handed like myself and you fight as a softball, developing your jab is critical to your success in the boxing ring. So the first thing that you need to grasp when you're developing your jab is the distance between you and your opponent. In this case, it's gonna be between you and the bag. And I always like to use a simple drill that if my hand is touching the bag, I'm just a little too close to get the full extension on my jab. So I'm gonna take like a baby step back, pull back. Maybe I'm three or four inches from the bag right now because I wanna close that distance with my jab. So I don't have my other glove on because I'm only gonna work on my right-handed jab. So my left hand is gonna be planted the entire time next to my face so I'm defensively protected on the left side of my body. Oh, I set up. I know that I'm a few inches away from the bag and now I just wanna close that distance. All right? Very basic, very beginner, all right? So I'm gonna close that distance by stepping in and putting my body behind that punch. I'll push off with my back foot and my front foot will move forward to close the distance and tap the bag. So in real time, what it's gonna look like is this. And you'll notice that right at the very end of my jab, I turn it completely over. My shoulder comes close to my chin, so I protect my chin when I'm throwing my jab. How do you condition that jab? How do you make sure that your jab is effective and you don't burn your arm out when you're in a sparring session or when you're in a fight? So a simple drill that my dad taught me at a very young age is to first not move around the bag, but stay in one position, and all you're gonna do is you get in your boxing stance, be aware that you're not gonna punch for 30 seconds like this, okay? You need to be punching like you would in the ring. You wanna have very good mechanics while you're shooting your jab because if you're gonna practice shit mechanics outside of the boxing ring, it's gonna transfer into the boxing ring and you're gonna have shit mechanics inside the boxing ring. So just be aware that this is not a speed drill, this is a drill that you're building conditioning and muscle memory of constantly landing that jab correctly. And you see that my jab comes back this way. I don't act like a train and bring it back like this. So that's one of the things that you have to be aware of too. As you're building this jab, the jab comes back, comes back, comes back, comes back all the time. And you'll see my left hand doesn't move. It may jerk forward because my whole body is jerking forward, but my left hand doesn't move. I don't drop it down. I don't go out with it like this. Because, like I said, you want to build real good mechanics on these drills. Now, as you move from doing 30 seconds to a minute to two minutes to three minutes to four minutes to five minutes, what you want to do is you want to make it realistic now of what you're gonna be doing in the ring. So say you get to two minutes, three minutes, you know you're not gonna stay in one spot and just shoot your jab. You know you're not gonna do this. 
you're going to have to move around. So what we did is I would get my boxing stance. Settle down, now I'd go back inside. And now I'd go back outside. And repeat the process. And the reason you want to do this is because naturally in the ring, when you're against either an orthodox fighter or a softball fighter, you're going to have to learn how to throw your jab working both to your right and to your left. So as you've built the mechanics of just staying in one position with throwing the jab, you're going to now have to make it so it's transferable into the ring and learn how to move from side to side while you're throwing your jab. Because in the ring, you're not just going to stay in one position shooting your jab. Now the next thing that you want to do when it comes to developing your jab is you want to learn how to change levels. And by changing levels, it's not always that you're going to hit up top to the head and you're going to go to the body, all right? And what you want to do is you want to learn how to throw your jab straight to the head and then you want to tap the jab or land the jab right to the chest because most times when you as a softball are in the ring against an orthodox fighter and you can't win the foot battle of keeping your lead foot on the outside, you're going to have to stop your orthodox fighter dead in their tracks and the way to do that is sometimes you're going to be able to hit them in the head, great, but most of the times you're going to have to aim for the chest and when you aim for the chest, you can stop them dead in their tracks as they're trying to shoot a right hand because they won that foot battle and they are on the outside of you and lining you up for a right hand. So a simple thing that you can do to work on your levels, we're not going to the body right now, we're just going to hit up top and we're going to aim for the chest of our imaginary orthodox fighter. In this case it's a, it's a bag. So we're going to tap up top, tap down, all right? You're going to tap up top, tap down. And you'll see that right now I'm not putting a lot of emphasis behind the punch because I want to make sure that I'm getting the mechanics down right. Tap up top, I extend completely, I'm protected. Come back, tap down, I drop a little bit. My boxing stance widens and I'm completely protected from getting hit in the head. And the reason I want to do that is because I'm imagining if I'm down here, my orthodox fighter's momentum coming at me with his right hand, I want to stop him dead in his tracks and use his momentum or her momentum against them. In real time, it will look like this. You don't want to shoot your jab here and go like this because you're completely open. You want to drop down a level as you shoot that jab, steady yourself and brace your feet into the ground so that you have a good base to support yourself if you do happen to get hit while you're down shooting that jab against your orthodox fighter. The other thing that you can work on when it comes to your jab is speed. The quicker your jab is, the less likely your opponent will see it. But there's a fine line between being extremely quick and being extremely effective with your jab. Because sometimes most people think that I can just get in front of the bag and I can do this. Yeah, those are quick punches, but none of them are effective. So I like to teach people from a very 
basic perspective of I want to teach you to land punches at full extension as fast as you can because if I can teach you how to do something properly right from the start then I can dial back and you can shorten up your jab if you're closing the distance but if I teach a person how to shoot a jab first by just doing this it's going to be extremely difficult for them to break that habit and get full extension on their jab and trying to speed it up like this. So it's difficult to do that. So you want to start with getting good mechanics and working on speed of those good mechanics. And just redoing what we started from the beginning, but you want to speed it up now, but you don't want to lose the effectiveness of your jab. So in your boxing stance, if you want to keep a high guard, or if you want to keep a low guard, it's totally up to you. But you want to get in your boxing stance, keep your left hand planted on the side of your head, and what you want to do is all right, my jab is very quick, but I'm not throwing a bunch of jabs like this. And you can double up the jab. So if you're just used to throwing one jab, don't be scared to throw two jabs. So double up that jab. And you can triple up that jab too because that's something that's lacking in a lot of beginners is they'll throw one punch, they may throw two punches, but they don't throw a third jab. And a lot of times your opponent isn't expecting a third or fourth punch. So if you're able to throw multiple jabs, three, four at a time, just makes it a whole lot easier for you to land your jab. When you start building the speed on your jab, you notice that it's a little bit more realistic of what you're doing in the ring. You're not standing in one position. Speed and power go hand in hand and sometimes the punch you don't see is the punch that really does the most damage. So if you can build speed on your jab with using really good mechanics, it can not only be detrimental to your orthodox fighter or your opponent, but it can also set up a beautiful left hand that your fighter may never expect. What are your thoughts? Are these some of the drills that you can do to improve your jab? I'd love to see your comments down below. And if you're new here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. I appreciate your time and have an amazing day.